minimally invasive endodontic treatment and direct restoration. New clinical case special for you. Let's go. Hello guys, uh, welcome back to BG Dental Cases. This time I will show you a very interesting uh, clinical case with clinical tips and tricks related to post-endodontic rehabilitations using direct composite restorations. So, uh, before I start, I would like to remind you not to forget to sign up to our YouTube channel and to put likes to these videos because it is very good motivation for us to keep on, on going with this series and I hope that these series are very useful for professionals with different clinical level. And also, when you sign up and when you put like, our video will be broadcasted by YouTube for many different dentists from our planet and all of us, all, of, all our dental community will become better. So, um, here is the initial situation. Patient was treated before with deep caries and unfortunately we got flare up. Sometimes it happens. We have to, uh, to say that sometimes it happens when you, we deal with deep caries, defects, that we may, we may get a flare up and, and, and symptoms because of pulpitis. One of the reasons why it happens in case if you follow proper protocols of caries excavation and the don uh, sorry caries excavation, rubber dam isolation, bonding protocols, and you have flare up, probably it was non-diagnosed chronic pulpitis already. So sometimes it makes uh, it, it hurts afterwards. But you have to to say this to the to your patient. You have to. Uh, to inform your patient if your patient has deep caries that in some cases, according to statistics, in 3-5% of cases we may get flare up because of the chronic pulpitis. This situation is not dangerous, this situation is under our control, so if everything, something will happen with your tooth, you will just call our front desk or, or yourself and uh, we will schedule you for root canal treatment. We will just make a very small entrance, we will do root canal treatment and everything will be okay. So your patient will be able to understand that sometimes after caries treatment, deep caries treatment, tooth may get flare up and that and also that this situation is not very dangerous. So dentist takes care and will help this patient in case if there will be a problem. And then you start your treatment. So that happened in my case. I treated deep caries, then after a week, I got flare up, I got symptoms, and this patient was uh, appointed like urgent case. We went into the root canals, we've made root canal treatment, and everything will be, was very good. I was able to do micro-invasive access, as I told you before. And if you're interested in that topic, by the way, uh, I mean the topic of access, micro-access, conventional access, straight line access, we are preparing a new online masterclass about access for posterior and anterior teeth, where we will be discussing techniques and guidelines how to do access for different groups of teeth with what kind of instruments to use, ergonomics, positions, how do we define the size of axis, what is minimally invasive axis, what is ninja axis, where is the diff, what is the difference, and so on and so on. There will be a lot of clinical tips and tricks that you will be able to learn and implement in your daily practice. So, there are many problems, by the way, with minimal invasive axis, and one of the problems related to restorative part is that it is difficult to fill pulp chamber with material uh, without voids and bubbles. So it doesn't matter what type of material you are going to use like uh, light curable composite or dual cure composite or bulk fill composite or whatever. In this case I will show you an option okay because we have many many methods how to restore Teeth. I will show you one of the options, uh, utilizing uh, dual cure car composite because it is faster, 
and then um, layer over with normal light curable enamel shades to create morphology and anatomy. So when you use dual cure core composites, they are fluid, they are liquid actually, and it is very difficult to fill on uh, all undercuts, especially in tiny areas with microinvasive access. So there is a tip that I use for such a cases. Uh, before you do restorative part, you take a light curable composite, you take a portion of light curable composite, you try to fit this portion into defect, it has to be pretty uh, similar size as, as your access cavity, okay? Then you light cure it, so you have this pre-cured uh, portion of composite that you will put on your table and then you will use it later on. Let us see what happens with uh, that approach. You know, on that video you'll be able to see what I was speaking about. So actually this is the portion of composite that we are going to pre-cure. I try it in, so it has to go. Okay, then we light cure it, and then we start our normal protocol, etching, rinsing, bonding, then we go with um, a dual cure uh, composite. It is liquid, as you see. We fill a pulp chamber, and straight after, really quickly, we take our pre-cured portion of light curable composite. We push it down, and it forces our uh, core build-up material to these tiny spaces. So it's like a plug in with a, with a pre-cured portion of composite. Then after your uh, dual cure core build-up material sets, we take our uh, normal composite, restore it, and we start to make morphology. We start, start to make enamel, uh, lingual side, buccal side, in different, how to say, order. If you want creating morphology, trying to mimic nature, with a printing microscope, you can see that it is very uh, interesting approach because you can see all these small details and you can enjoy uh, layering procedures. Uh, you can try to imitate some natural um, features of teeth. Uh, here you can see that I was using a very small portion of uh, opaque white composite to imitate hypercalcification on the on the cusps zone and also uh, if you're a big fan of of uh, mimicking nature uh, in some cases you also can can use mm, tints you can use tints you can mark your fissures with a special tint to imitate uh, staining in the teeth like you can see here uh, honestly speaking nowadays I'm not using that approach I do morphology, I do fissures, I do tips of the cusps, I do uh, ridges because the, the, it is important anatomical features that function, okay? The hypercalcification or staining is just for yourself, it's just a, a thing that, uh, how to say, that highlights your pers personal satisfaction. But it takes time. So when I was a big fan of direct composites and I did a lot of cases, I tried that approach because I enjoyed. But now, uh, since experience in that field, I can say that it takes time and I don't want to waste my time and, and time of my patient because this procedure does not influence the functional, uh, functional things and also by bio mechanical integration of our restorations. They have to fit, restorations have to fit, they have to create, to, to, to have proper occlusal contacts and marginal seal, that is important. And if you guys are uh, interested in composite techniques, we have a very big composite course, which is module two, and we call this, this uh, course like composite protocols. We teach how to use composite materials in direct, indirect and semi-direct way in very feasible and easy going protocols that you can implement in your daily practice. Also during this course we teach how to do full mass rehabs with so-called copy-paste technique using uh, composite materials 
in prosthetic cases. So if you're interested in that, we will be more than happy to uh, see you in our training center in Kiev, Ukraine. You can find a uh, link with description of this, of this course uh, under that video. So let us do summary. We, I showed you during this clinical presentation tip how to uh, fill pulp chamber uh, with no voids using uh, composite materials and pre-cured portion. Hope you enjoyed uh, this session. Uh, if so, don't forget to put like and to sign up to our YouTube channel. And I would like to say as, uh, as in a traditional way, may the dental force be with you guys and see you next time. Bye-bye.